Hello, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Model Bench. Yes, it's review time again, another kit review. And this is along the same old theme of the video I did the other day. Uh, this is an RC135V slash W rivet joint. And when I was telling you, remember I said about the KC135, some of them became um, electronic, you know, search aircraft or whatever. And this is one of those. So it still has the refueling boom on the back. Um, it may have the refueling boom on the back. It's certainly in the kit. I've looked inside the box. It's certainly in the kit. But uh, whether it's actually got it fitted or not, I do not know. Why have I got this, you ask yourself? I was looking for KC135 stuff on um, Hannant's because, as you, some of you have asked for me to do, an aftermarket review for those kits and what fits what and what doesn't. And I saw this on special offer at Hannant's. And this is actually £29.99 at the moment. Normally $44.99, I think, and it's on for $29.99. And for those of you that don't have a lot of room um, and you've got a few kits under your belt, because believe me, Rodan is not a, uh, a snap together kit by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so those of you that don't have a lot of room for a 70 second scale and you want a 135 in your life, this could be the way to go. Um, it's, it's a lovely looking aircraft. It's very unusual. All its antenna and bulges and everything everywhere. So... Unfortunately, the box art is a little bit misleading. It's got the flaps down. The wings don't have um, retractable flaps, so they're just all in one piece. So you've got what you've got. So, um, so yeah, this is the Rodan kit, and it's kit number 349, 144 scales, made in Ukraine, obviously. So on here, we've got all our um, bits and pieces, and it's telling us some history about the aircraft there. You can have a read there, should you want to. There is in German, French... Italian, Spanish, Ukraine. And unfortunately, I'm guessing that's Russian. They've put the sticker on the Russian bit. <laughs> so there we are. Um, and then look under the box is just the box on it again. And then here we've got, I guess there's only one version available in the box. But this, this, this one here, this is the RC135 rivet, rivet joint 6114845, call sign Snoop45. US Air Force Milden Hall early 2022 so you can see her there with the white top and the uh, and the grey bottom with the um, CFM 56 engines looking very very nice see here made in Ukraine skill level 3 so uh, there we are um, can't see a kit date on here I should have looked on um, scale mate but anyway let's have a look inside the box it's a top opening box obviously fairly rigid bottom fairly thin top all the sprues are just slung in one bag, including the clear sprues, so they might be scratched. So that's not very thoughtful of them, is it? So that's not the best. Um, and then we have the instructions and the decal sheet in one sealed bag as well. So if you do store your kits, are there holes in here? I'm just thinking, um, usually I would take, if, if you're storing your kits in your loft or your garage or whatever, I would take the uh, instructions and the decals out because they will be destroyed. So yeah, this looks like a sealed bag, properly sealed. So uh, we'll get a knife and we'll cut the side of it off there. And then we can get our instructions, decals and colour callouts out of the bag. Like so. So the decal sheet looks quite nice. It looks quite glossy. A um, little bit on the thick side. But we've got a few bits of stenciling in there. We've got the fuel... Um, the refueling um, area marked out there. We've got our stars and bars. Um, we've got our um, American flags there and our and our um, squadron, whatever. <laughs> you know the words I'm looking for. And we've got the red and the blue flashes. I'm guessing they're going to be. This is actually not the kit that's on the side of the box. Sixty one four eight four five. And this is 64845. Um, I'm just wondering. Hmm. I always thought they would have had one 4845. I always thought they put the last letter in. But it's got a 6 there. I don't know why they've got that. I have to check the references. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is wrong. But uh, whatever. So there we go. So we've only got one option. And that's the colour call out for it there. With our instructions as a single sort of a4 size sheet we've got the colors called out there all in viejo so it's easy to cross reference um very nice indeed uh they're telling us here this color here is i 
which is pale grey blue. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be gunship grey or if it's a lighter grey than that. But there we go. So have a look in the instructions. So we've got all sorts of information about the aircraft there in three different languages. We've got some health and safety stuff here, instructions for applying decals. We've got our performance information. And then going inside, it's just a single sheet of paper with instructions. Here's our, um, our call out telling us bits and pieces we're not going to use. So if you've got an ordinary KC-135, it doesn't have the fuel boom fitted. Look, so there we go. Um, so you've got an ordinary KC-135, you've got the, uh, the glazing there for the nose. You've got a spare one. Um, so they're going into the build of the model, straight into building up the, um, the nose undercarriage. Then we're building up some antenna. And then we're into the engines. Then we're into the main undercarriage. Then we're going to assemble the engines to the wings. And, and fit the undercarriage to the wings. This is a bit of a weird <laughs> sequence, isn't it? And then we've got clear parts going inside the fuselage. And then we're going to bring the fuselage halves together, fit the wings with the engine and undercarriage already fitted, fit that big pod on the side, and then fit this piece on the top of the fin, fit the, ant the um, antenna, the tailplane, stabilizers, and then we've got lots and lots of antenna going on the bottom there. Something I can see straight away that I really don't like I wish manufacturers wouldn't do this. They've got the antenna moulded into the fuselage. So now we've got to go in and that seam, we've got to deal with that in between all those antenna. Or you can just cut them off and put them back on after. But um, yeah, it's a bit annoying that the way they've done that. I wish they'd just mould the antenna like um, big planes kits do. They give you a straight fuselage and then you add the antenna after. So we've got lots of lumps and bumps going all over it here. And we've got a, they're asking us to put a, a thread there look for the antenna. There we are, very, very simple instructions. Let's have a look at the kit, see what it's like. We'll get the light on now that we're looking at some plastic. Uh, so we'll get this bag open. I thought $29.99 would be a bit of a bargain. Um, looks like I was wrong. <laughs> but uh, if you want a, if you want a 40, 144 scale RC135, then this is probably the best one out there. Um, I'm not sure if Academy do one, but uh, here we go. So we have beautifully fine, really fine recessed rivet lines, which is really nice. The shape of the fuselage looks incorrect. It looks like they've tried to get in that the uh, swage in there of a 707, but we've got those big flat pieces going on the side. Maybe that's why they've got that all flat like that. But um, We've got the top of the fin there. We can see this one's actually damaged. This is actually split open where the plastic's so thin, but that's not a problem. Um, got some small windows there in the doors. We've got this huge extended nose for the big radar that's going in there. But you can see on here the, the panel lines are exquisite. I just hope the fit is nice because, as I say, we've got to go and sand in between all these bloody um, antenna, which is a right pain. At least they've got the rudder moulded in one piece, so you get a nice thin trailing edge on that. So that's all looking good. Got a big scratch in it there, but uh, that'll be covered with a bit of primer. Got some flash on here, look. Some flash on there, which is typical for Rodan. And then here, next sprue, we've got the... This is the upper wings. So again, we've got this beautiful recessed riveting. All our flaps and everything are all moulded in, so there's no... No option to have them dropped. Um, we do have part of the engine nacelles the there, so that's nice. We're engine pylon, should I say. Undercarriage bay there with a little bit of ribbing in it just to add some detail. But, um, nice. Nice they've got the sprue moulded to protect the ends of the wings. Big plane kits, are you watching? Um, they should do they do it on their wings and they don't do it on their tail planes. Uh, so, yeah, we've got some damage on here. Look, this is from it all just being chucked in a bag. There's a part there or a ejector tab or something. So this is the bottom of the wings now. Again, we've got all that lovely recessed panel lining. Very, very nice indeed. And we've got a knacker ducts in the end of the wings there. Now, I would have thought... Yeah, we've got some some antenna to go on the end of the wings. Yeah, there they are there, look. So I don't quite know 
how they're going to fit because there's nowhere for them to go. That's a bit strange. I've got a hole there. I don't know. A bit weird. But um, they're showing them there. It looks like there's a sort of section cut out of the wing for it to go into if you look closely, but there's, there's nothing there, so we'll probably have to cut a section about what part number was that? That was 4F. So we'll have a look when we have a look at the um, F sprue. Here's the F sprue. 4F, there we go. There's the antenna there. Yes, yeah, so you've got to cut a section of the wing out and get that put in. There you go. We've got the fuel boom there, which we're not going to use. Tail planes. Sink mark in there. Look, this is the problem with molding everything in one piece. It seems like only wing nut wings can do it properly. We've got sink mark in there. That's have to be filled. That looks bloody awful. Um, it looks like they've got the tail planes the same top and bottom, so you can just put them upside down or whatever if you have to. Nice deep uh, impression there for the um, for the elevators. We've got the huge side pods there going on. They're going to fit onto the fuselage like that. So they're going to look very nice indeed. Um, and then we've got looks like gear doors there and then we've got three different fin tops there so obviously we're only going to use one of them and then we've got our nose gear leg there pitot tube some other bits and pieces and then we've got an engine sprue here we've got two of these they're identical so we've got the actual main engine cell itself we've got the back end back there and then we've got the intake at the front oh dear that wasn't very thoughtful of them, was it? They've got a great big cross in there. Look. So you're going to have to get in there and try and sand out those brew gates and not enlarge them more. That's going to be a nightmare. Hmm. Wasn't such a bargain after all, was it? <laughs> uh, maybe 12 99 would have been more appropriate. Anyway, uh, we've got our wheels there. They look quite nice. A little bit of detail on them. Those wheels look nice as well. Lots and lots of antenna, greeblies and bits and pieces. And um, they've also given us spare bits because I remember it said in the instructions make four of those and we've got five there. So it's nice they've given us extras. But, um, on a whole, I mean, it's all right, isn't it? It'll probably build into a lovely model. It's, it's certainly not as bad as other roving kits I've seen. If you remember that BPK thing not is it bpk funny enough big planes kits is bpk it's 70 second scale russian radar aircraft and uh, that thing was awful um there we go so we've got the there's our spare nose and then there's the one we're going to use so and that is actually breaking off the sprue i'm going to get that in its own little bag and put that separately in the box but so uh, there we go so you can see the detail there and your wheels and everything in your antenna and the carriage legs great big ejector pin marks in them that's unfortunate hmm oh well i suppose that one won't matter because it'll be covered by a gear door but that side that side does so they'll have to be filled but on the whole yeah it's not bad is it Will I make it? I don't know. I might do it. be a quick little build, wouldn't it? It's just a sh this. This is the bit that really annoys me. That's the bit that's the pain. Um, we've got all these little raised lumps here as well. Okay, so these are actually molded, so they stick out on the surface. You can't sand the fuselage sides either because all those antennas are sticking out. Oh, why do they do this? Why oh why oh why? Pain in the bum. Proper pain in the bum. Anyway, there we go. So that has been a review of this lovely, lovely kit from Roden, number three four nine. It's the it's the RC one three five V slash W River Joint. Mm. Maybe go and get one if you fancy it, or maybe not. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye for now.